Yeah, thanks. Big shouts to Vince. He got me sick. Yeah, so how have you, <laughs> how have you been for the past week? So basically, we filmed last week's this episode. It's so bad for me right now, but like. It's sugar free, bro. I'm looking out I for you. I don't trust it. Yeah, it's probably not good I'm drinking for you. Cause I'm, I'm drinking this because my throat is dry. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, last it week. Like we filmed, <laughs> it tastes like cancer. Oh, you guys don't sue me, Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got me sick, so I'm trying to kill you. Hey, two years later, you guys see me with a brand deal? <laughs> don't bring this clip up. Hey. <laughs> I was um, so last week Tuesday <clears throat> we filmed last episode, and I started. I was feeling good at that time. Yeah. Although I was starting to feel a little sick. Yeah. And then almost like right when you left, I stayed up a little bit later to do something, and then I woke up the next day like trash. My throat was sore. I had stuffy nose, headache, couldn't think straight. That was the craziest thing for me. That's my bad. And then Thursday it felt the same. Yeah. Friday I got a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And then today, I feel like I'm trying to, I'm starting to get over it. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely gave that to you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bro. Uh, Appreciate welcome, you. You know. But <laughs> champions mind, overcome you know? adversity. So, we're here. I like, I like that. I like that resiliency. Is that how you say it? Being resilient? No. Being resilient. Yeah, it's an action. It's an action word. See, the grammar, not my forte. Yeah, it's fine. So, we start off with Lil Nas' album. Really? That quick? You texted me about it, so I figured you had a lot to say. Uh, I was wondering what you, th- you thought about it. I thought. So, oh, honestly, no. Off the I cost. thought about this today while I was driving, um, about like how I felt about the album. Mm-hmm. So, I think I liked, I think there's like seven songs, and I liked two of them. Mm. But the thing is, is I think he kind of did that on purpose, because there's like, the two country songs, right? Which the Old Town Road, obviously, and then do you think the one with Cardi is like a country song? It had that vibe. Probably, yeah. It was like country fusion, yeah. So it was more of that like country hip hop fusion. Okay. And then he had the Panini song, which was which is a banger. That song is a banger. <laughs> and that's like that's like a hip hop song, like yeah. traditional, right? And they had two, like, yeah. And then two the next song chants. was like a rock song. Yeah. And then I don't remember after that, but I think he did that on purpose. Like me too. He wants to bring everyone together. So I liked two songs. I'm sure a country fan liked two songs. Yeah. I'm sure the rock guys liked two songs. You exactly. know what I mean? So there's a little bit of something for everybody. So I actually think it was dope. <laughs> yeah. I think I would say it's a good album, but it's a rare album where I don't like I like ten percent of the songs or whatever. Yeah, I think it's not even I think what he was trying to do, what you like you just led into is not limiting himself to a certain style, right? Because a lot yeah. of artists, once they make a certain type of song, that becomes a brand and people are looking for that from them. Yeah. So I like the fact that he had a diverse album mm-hmm. I, I appreciate all the songs uh, On his album Obviously Panini Is probably my favorite song More yeah, my vibe hot. More my energy um, You know I don't think any song Was horrible mm-hmm. I'm curious to see What he does In his next project If I was on his team I would say Yo this is super smart Just make sure When you make Different types of songs You execute compl- Like make it the best The yeah. best rock yeah. song You can possibly make Yeah uh, I mean that was one thing Like yeah. I didn't like The rock songs But yeah. I could tell That they were good Like the Same. guitar was the drums were Same. nice you know what I mean exactly like it wasn't for me but I liked it like I liked the production I guess yeah but shout out to Lil Nas man. he just like I like it was good I like his soul I like his came brand. out of nowhere and he's doing mm. his thing I he's like going it. hard with it too yeah I'm interested to see for the album if he picks a genre and just sticks with it or if he does the whole you know a little bit yeah. of everything I think that's what he interesting I think that's why he dropped his EP to test to see what people like from him yeah I think people love the Panini, so I think we're gonna see yeah, I more. I think Panini's gonna be like a hit. hit. I think we're gonna see more old time old Panini vibes from yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, that Cardi song was good too. It was, it was good. Cardi can rap. Cardi can actually rap. I don't Speaking know she of Cardi, what's up? You see, she got album of the year. Yeah, from the BT Awards. You, yeah. You, let's hang on. You think she deserved that? I need to look at the nominees first. It was Travis Scott. Rodeo was on there. She beat Rodeo. Not Rodeo. Or that's it. Rodeo. Yeah, he said Rodeo. Astro no, World. Astro World. It was uh, Travis Scott. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank right now. Here we go. I'm about to pull it up. It was Cardi B. Um, I just know that she won, and I was extremely surprised, especially because Nipsey passed. R.I.P. I, I Nipsey, figured. I figured his album would have got. I don't think he was on, on. I don't think he was even on that. Well, he got. Um, I think he got, I think he got Artist of the Year or something like yeah, that. Lifetime Achievement Award or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, that one. I think they gave him that. Um, here we go. I forgot the nominees, but I know Travis Scott was on there for sure and her. Jeez, it was a lot of awards. Hang on. Um, yeah, he got okay. hip-hop, male hip-hop artist of the year. Shout oh, out wow. to Nipsey, man. All right, Rest in peace. I hope his family's doing well. Yeah, they're doing well. They're living healthy. Okay, you know? so she beat Ella Mai. 
Yeah. I don't know if I said that right. LMA or LMI? LMA. I think it's LMA, yeah. I, truth be told, I didn't really listen to her album. She beat the Carters album, which surprises me because oh, of how many people yes. stand Jay and Beyonce. And she beat my personal album of the year, Championships, by Meek Mill. Which was funny because I think Meek deserved the album of the year. I think year. Meek deserved it because of his story of his last story. year. You know? um, Comes out of jail, drops a crazy project. But what, what did Cardi say in her? She said, numbers don't lie. Three times platinum. I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. She's such a brand. So I, I guess think over those albums, I mean, and, and it's probably World deserved. Astro World definitely deserved to win. I think that was one of like Championships deserved to win. That was for, uh, in my opinion, that was Travis Scott's first actually finished project. Like, he actually finished all the songs. Everything's been mixtapes. I didn't really, what was his debut album? Was, was it that, nine? Was, that, was Asher what it is? No, wasn't it like nine oh four one eight or something like that? Is that what it is? Or uh, I think this was his second album because he's. I think Rode, days before. Oh, Rodeo. Was Rodeo, Rodeo was the debut album, and then days before Rodeo was that mixtape. Oh, I thought, I thought they were all were mixtapes to Asher World. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. Bird, Birds in the Trap, essential album. That's says, right. That was his that first. was a crazy album too. So I think Birds in the Trap and then Asher World okay. were his two, and Rodeo was probably his mixtape. Yeah. Yeah, days before rodeo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Travis definitely deserved it, but I'm not gonna knock Cardi because at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And Cardi's just and a she really brand. did go. Triple and like, five. I rap Cardi songs. So two year come up basically. Is that when she Bodak Yellow came out like two years ago? Yeah, and then um, uh, and she's just been hot ever since. Ever since, and like, I mean, she has, she has a good story. A Cardi verse on a song can really elevate it. Like, look at Lil Nas. She fit that song well, which is weird. I didn't uh, expect that. Oh, uh, was that money? The song "Money" by mm-hmm. Cardi. Hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wake up to that. I'm like, Cardi, what? It's a good wake up song. That's the alarm clock song. Yeah. I'm like, move is money. <laughs> I love it. So I guess we should talk. We talk about the other awards. Let's, let's we, talk. No, let's talk about her baby daddy hitting the moves. Offset was. I saw I a, uh, dance like that. Yeah, I saw a tweet that was like. Chris Brown has played for hours. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Start doing celebrity dance battles. Yo, when he hit that like that neck thing, uh, I was like, he doesn't want to smoke with Chris Brown, bro. Bro, are we gonna see celebrity dance offs? Was it off? Like, can Offset really break it down like that? Look like it. That choreography was good. He killed it. I was not expecting that. Yeah, Dude, I wish I performances were more like that. Yeah, for real. Like too often, you just see rappers like jumping left or right That's on it. stage. You know. I wish performances were actually like choreographed and like there was a set and all that. Can we talk about the Migos come up? Just like from nothing? And like uh for a second, right? Like so congrats to the Migos. <laughs> um what's their what's their label they're part of again? QC. QC like I think they were the first act on that yeah, label. Right? Migos and they have City Girls, they have Little Yachty. Yeah. Um uh, Little Baby on there. Little Baby on there. So like um UK rep Stefan Don is yeah, on there. Right. So That's crazy. So for the fact that they can build uh, from the Migos up Yeah As a group And all have solo careers Yeah And still kill it And then They're just You know They're just killing The music industry right now I think like You look at you look at rap songs Like I think they probably Have some of the most music Out right now Probably From the label They're just Their going they're Commercials just going are everywhere Yeah So let's I've been wanting to talk to you About that actually Do you think Oversaturation is a thing Because uh, for me I know <clears throat> that I don't get excited About Migos music anymore because I've heard I've heard it so much. Mm. Like they all dropped solo projects last year, and an album, and they're on every commercial, and I feel like they're at a point where they're kind of oversaturated mm-hmm. right now. So I don't. If I was them, I think I would just do features for a little bit. Yeah. And let people build up, drop some singles, and then drop an album. Um, I just think they're dropping too often. Okay, so I, I from a fa- from a fan from a fandom, right. It's good to miss people for a little bit, yeah, and then come back. At the same time, when you have a moment, yeah, it's like, do you? How do you squeeze it out and like yeah. make sure you're you getting all the the, uh, the juice from the lemon right? Uh, but on the back end, for the pure business side of a label, mm-hmm. pushing records and selling records is your business, yeah, right? You're right. And since you're streaming, right, and it's not. Uh, Hard cassettes or hard CDs, like I feel like the label and them, their strategy is get the most numbers, mm. get it while you're hot, <clears throat> and just keep getting more and more fans, get more and more plays. So from like a business standpoint, I love it. I think that to be very careful though with the Migos or the headliner 
like what you're saying is like people might lose interest in them yeah. um, and completely will like dilute their brand too much because mm-hmm. I agree when they they dropped uh, Culture 2 right yeah. and then they had the QC mixtape and they, they had and home, all the solo albums all, all the solo albums and then they yeah. had all the features yeah like you get less excited every for, album had a Quavo feature right yeah you get you get less excited to hear it I think from a business standpoint it's smart just keep throwing songs like because like yeah, cause I'm sure it raises the the it was all singles, performance fee too right yeah it's all singles, so they yeah. if they yeah, can get true. if they can get a stir fry, they're happy, right? That's like one breakout song, probably one five times platinum. <laughs> there they yeah. go. Yeah. I think that's the game they're playing. It's like just as they just want to shoot as much as possible and mm-hmm. hope one goes in. Yeah, hope everything goes in. Yeah, yeah. I guess I don't know. I just feel like at least for me, I don't get excited about Migos music right now. Yeah, and do they have the talent to have a J Cole type of career or a Kendrick type of career where they can be quiet as a group? Yeah. Ooh, as a group, yes. as a group, yeah. I think if they split up, then no. no. But I mean, you just got to think about that group, man. Like, and you think Offset can making. rap, Offset can, can rap. take off, can rap, and Quavo can make a hook out of nothing. Yeah, it's just like a perfect dynamic, honestly. Mm-hmm. And maybe they're uh, gonna switch gears a little bit and move from trap and hype music, and actually, get, like, I mean, Offset's last uh, album, he he had a couple of bangers on there. Where he was actually rapping, rapping. Yeah, he was opening up a lot. So yeah. um, I want to see more of that from him. Oh yeah, I think in terms of rapping ability, I think yeah. Takeoff's the best. Or Offset, I'm sorry. Takeoff has bars too. Takeoff, he has flow. He's flow. His flow is crazy. <laughs> that <laughs> that <thing. laughs> That's all him. Shout out Fifty Cent. Yeah. <laughs> you seen that clip of him? <laughs> <laughs> <roasting> <laughs> him? Yeah. Oh y'all sound the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how they felt about that. It's funny. Um, oh, this all niggas. Yeah. Uh, what else happened this week? Oh, the NBA draft. We saw Zion. a lot of kids' lives change. Wow! In a blink of an eye. I watched Zion's little um, man. You see how interview? humble he was. Yeah, I respect that so much. Give all the thanks. To I his think mommy. what he was talking about too was special. He was like, uh, or I think his mom said it. She was like, "You know it's coming, and you see it coming." Yeah. But until it happens, it's still hard to believe. And like, I think that's true. Yeah. Like, because you saw it on his face. Like, exactly. He acted like he had no idea he was about to get drafted. Yeah. The way he reacted. It was like, it, it, yeah, it must be surreal being in the... Because um, you grow up watching the draft, watching LeBron, watching everyone play. And he worked and then, hard for it, too. Yeah, he did. And then all of a sudden... Like his mom said like he's trusted because they were talking it. about how... She coached him. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. But it's funny they were talking about how Zion and John Morant played together. Mm-hmm. And like, I think, I think they said high school, like early high school. Yeah. Um... And how Zion wasn't even that good yet. And yeah. Ja wasn't even that good yet. Yeah. But it's like, they still didn't give up. And they yeah. still worked and worked, worked and worked. And worked. And it looked, Got it to paid this off. point now. It paid off. And now they're in the league. Instant playing. millionaires. Yeah. Instantly. Instant. Yeah. I mean, Nike really gave Zion that, that contract. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they already have the bag. But it's like, when you get drafted, it's like, opens the door up. Yeah. And appearance is probably 10 grand. Any contract that they sign is over a million easily. Yeah. You know what I mean? The ballplayers get big money, bro. I just yeah. saw an article of Luan Dang. He has a $125 million real estate portfolio. Um, for real? Good yeah. for him. He doesn't even him. play anymore. I think he still plays, right? Yeah. No? Well, he's on a team. He doesn't, I mean, get, any, he, he doesn't he's got, get any tick, yeah. though. So there, uh, the article, I, I, I skimmed it, so I didn't get too much about it. But That's it's crazy. cool how um, you know these people, especially I was talking to, who was talking about, anyway, it doesn't matter, but about you know minorities and urban people and not having opportunities and whatever yeah. and it's cool to see people turn you know a bag to a bigger bag and create opportunities mm-hmm. um, so I'm just excited to see like LeBron James for me is my favorite NBA player just because yeah we know of, of, yeah <laughs> sorry just because of what he uh, what he does outside of basketball yeah and I think that uh, I think Zion has that same DNA mm-hmm. where he's really gonna create and do more outside yeah. and like uh, since we're in a, a different age of social media and like you're so close to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's gonna have one. Like he, he might have a bigger brand than Jordan one day if he executes. Yeah, I think it's a personality thing too. Yeah. Because some people just want to hoop. Like yeah. Kawhi is a perfect example. Yeah, he just wants to hoop. Exactly. So it all depends on how Zion's like built. You know, if he wants to be a mogul, or if he just wants to play. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you just play and you just focus on balling, yeah, you're. You're set. Your kids are set. Their kids are set. Yeah. Probably their kids are set. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the idea is like, okay, he made it to the NBA. So like, what is your like? We just talked about on the vlog, right? Is like, what it could be. Don't chase. Don't taste the destination. Mm-hmm. Is like, I wonder if he chased. Can you can tell like, all right, the way I look at it, everyone in the NBA is probably the greatest players in the world, right? Some people's 
like pure goal was to make it to the NBA. Yeah. They make it and like they don't become star players, right? They're yeah. on the bench, they go team to team, they make some bags, whatever. And they're in the league, they're part of organization, but they're not the breakout stars or franchise <clears throat> players, right? Right. I feel like same thing with any sport is like, is your goal to make it, or is your goal to be the best in the world? And I'm curious to see his mindset, RJ's mindset, you know, the top ten guys who got drafted and like that pressure being so good yeah. to get all the hype and then yeah. going back to go execute. Um and wonder like Yeah, because the job's not done. Job's not done. Like they hit a milestone. Exactly. Like yeah, they didn't hit the finish line. Like Kawhi is quiet, but you can tell he's not finished. Uh LeBron yeah. and not finished. Stuff not finished, KD not finished. Like yeah. all these breakout stories that we all know that we all talk about, the media hypes up is people who like are putting the work in. Like mm-hmm. you mean telling me LeBron James is one of the highest paid, the biggest brands, is set, but is still in the gym and investing that much to be great. Yeah. Like, I wonder if Zion going to take that same kind of approach mm-hmm. and, like, what that means to, like, go into the league, make it, make the millions of dollars, and then be like, no, I'm here to be the greatest ever. Yeah. <laughs> and play through that process and win chips and, yeah. you know. That's a tough road, too, because especially with when it comes to being the greatest ever, you're mm-hmm. compared to LeBron and MJ. Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of people, if you told them, even if you're in the NBA, if you told them, you know, I'm trying to be the best ever. Yeah. And you'd get called crazy, yeah. even though you made it to the NBA. Exactly. So I think the other side of that is what we were talking about last week, like confidence. Like, are you confident enough to set a goal despite what everyone else has to say mm-hmm. and do it? You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's so much of a like an ingrained brain thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not something you can develop. Exactly. You no. just have to have, like, almost foolish confidence in yourself. Yeah, to go you know? for it and then, like, have the... Um uh, willpower like, maybe Willpower but the ability to like Recognize what it's gonna take I think it's easier yeah. To say you're the greatest at something Than, than like Learn what it actually takes mm-hmm. Like just to be good at something Yeah Or be like What it takes to be consistent Is hard What it takes to be Good and consistent What it takes to be Good consistent And then become great And mm-hmm. what it takes to be consistent And the best Yeah And then what it takes to be Like all time great the amount of work Mm -hmm. and mental fortitude and never being satisfied like that's for me is like what I go through every single day Yeah, and like it's more prevalent in sports because this is stats people are watching every single day so it's like there's an insane amount of pressure on these kids like yeah he 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 took Duke to you know whatever they lost whatever they made it happen shout Uh, out Michigan State shout out to Michigan State shout out to Xavier Tillman yo man Tillman. Grand Rapids <laughs> finest. Grand Rapids finest, yo. Uh, shut him down, boy. You see him too, like he's putting the work in, right? Yeah, that's um, that's a prime example of putting the work in. Exactly. Right so like it's uh it's 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 funny to me about you know how or how much work it takes to actually be the greatest. Yeah, and I Man. think it's different in sports too because like we all know that doctors make a lot of money. Yeah, and there is a roadmap for that. Like you know that you have to go to school for a long time. You know that the better university you get into, probably the better hospital you get a job yeah. at. But for sports, it's completely different. Yeah. You know, it's not like when you tell the school you want to be a pro basketball player, it's not like they're like, okay, you got to go to this gym for two years yeah. and then this gym. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what, in my mind, I think athletes are entrepreneurs because you're working without a roadmap and yeah. you're betting on yourself. Exactly. You know? And that's just like, that's how, what entrepreneurs do. Like exactly. There's no roadmap and you're betting on betting what you yourself, have and that's you. what you can bring to the table and what, yeah. what your IP is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like interesting, isn't it? Huh? It's crazy. Athletes are definitely entrepreneurs. And that's why a lot of them turn into that too. Yeah. Not only because of their, their financial capability, but because of the game. It's like forever being played. Yeah, I think it's a and, mentality thing. Yeah, and like, they're being so competitive naturally. Especially the guys that come from nothing. Like LeBron's a prime example. We yeah. talk about him a lot, but it's because there's so much to learn from him. Like he came from absolutely nothing, single family household, and or a single parent household, and bet on himself enough and had that drive in him to become the second best, arguably the best player in the NBA history. Did you just say the Depending second? on who you ask. Second best right now, you mean of all time? Oh, no, second best of all time. Okay. Yeah. The second behind Jordan? Yeah. Okay. I th- I said, like, arguable. Yeah. I don't want to give my opinion on that argument, yeah. but we'll, we'll just leave that's right a there. different thing. But well, let me give my opinion, because you said you just said I it. I know what your opinion is. Uh, I think, I think you do, but you don't. I, I I agree with a lot of people that I think being the best player or being the best at something is more about is is more than about the wins. It means like the whole the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Like that's what the greatest is. Muhammad Ali didn't have the best record. But did he make he made a lot of people want to box. Yeah, that's true. And I think Jordan is the greatest because that's, that's actually a really good point. If LeBron didn't see Jordan play, I he probably would have played football instead of basketball. 
So I, I give I give uh, I give Jordan the greatest ever because yeah. not only did he win, not only was he good, he made people want to play the game. He made basketball cool. He made the brand. He made basketball cool. He made it a, yeah for sure one of the biggest sports in America. LeBron is, is now holding that torch, <laughs> and that's why we see a player like Zion. Yeah, he's basically LeBron two point oh, like yeah. like. You can't argue that. Yeah. He's a big player. He likes to dunk. You know, he's, he's aggressive. Quick, he's quick. IQ. You yeah. know? So, like, you get to see the effect. Yeah. It's like, oh, now we, like, we finally got another LeBron. That's why everyone's like, no matter what anybody says, right? <laughs> like, we don't like LeBron. He's trash. He's not, like, no. You wouldn't care about Zion if you didn't care about LeBron James. Or he yeah. didn't. You right? So, it's or uh, we, I guess if we wouldn't be prepared for Zion. You wouldn't be prepared for Zion. You know? So, because that's at the end of the day, that's what everyone's comparing him mm-hmm. to. But. I think for me, like picking the best of all time is kind of unfair, because I just think it's just too—they're too far apart. Yeah, you know, I think the reason that we can say that Jordan was better than Kobe is because we actually got to see that matchup. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it's like, how are you going to compare people who never played against each other yeah. and who played a different position? Exactly. You know, because there's two nothing like it's just too hard to compare. Like, yeah, they played against different teams, so how can you compare who was better? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they're t- they're the, they're the goats. Yeah. And then Kareem's a goat. There's Kareem's a lot a goat. of goats. There's a lot of goats. Yeah. You know? And I think the LeBron over Jordan thing will be discussed until we die. Until we die. And who knows? Maybe it'll be uh, some the Zion people, and Some old people have seen them both. You know, some people lead to uh, Jordan and some people lead to LeBron. So Yeah, I think it's just, I just what you grew up on. Yeah. You know, we watched LeBron growing up, so yeah. naturally we're going to pick LeBron. Yeah. And all our parents watch Jordan, so they're gonna pick him. Like, bro, Jordan was bad. Yeah, I hear stories about Jordan. That's why I gave him the credit. Yeah, being lit, being hung over, I think like I don't know, going to the club or the casino and then come yeah. dropping sixty. That might make you the greatest, bro. Because LeBron yeah. be going to sleep early, he be working out, like hanging out with the kids in the morning. Hanging with the kids and stuff. Yeah, like he's yeah, really yeah. doing the right thing. He's and the he's, family man. He's a family man doing great. Yeah. Like Michael was at the club, bro, <laughs> and like pulled up and put sixty on you. Like yeah. he might be the goat, bro. Like, yeah. like, like, like I don't know, like. He'd make a million at the casino, yeah, and then pull up, and make pull a million up, on the court, and then dip. Like yeah. Jordan's shoes, like I yeah. mean, people die with those shoes, literally. literally. So he might literally be uh, the greatest ever. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a never-ending argument. I don't think anyone's like I shouldn't say anyone, but like that, the fact that people die over those shoes, kind of like is a testament to his greatness. Yeah, I which think is bad. He, what, like, we shouldn't congratulate from that because I, no, I think no, it's no, stupid. No. But it's just funny though. It is true though. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting how Jordan has the the shoe brand has stayed relevant in the yeah. fashion game for so long, especially in the era of we get bored of things so fast. Yeah, you know. But I think like a pair of jeans and some Jordans it will never go out of style. You never. know, <laughs> it's just interesting how he did that. Shout yeah. out to the Urban maybe Community. Shout out to Nike, bro. Maybe it's just the nature of the shoes are just dope, and that's it. I mean, that's that's it. And like, you want to go down to the science of what like black culture is, American culture, and American mm-hmm. culture. Uh, the American consumerism drives the world. So, yeah. yeah, if you go down to like the basics of like Nike being that big of a brand, a powerhouse, and Jordan technically being their like marketing arm mm. to get people to buy more Nike products, but also develop a cool shoe that people actually want to wear. Like the science of it makes sense, right? Like the fact that like uh, a Jordan shoe and Jordan the brand <coughs> is so ingrained into the hood mentality and urban culture. And like that's what's hot right now, and what's been hot forever. It's been hot, yeah. Uh, like that's what drives the brand. Like the shoe would never go out of style. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because just like, yeah, people are still wearing ones to this day. To this to this day, it's just yeah. like how Polo has a Polo shirt. Right. It's like things like that. Like yeah, that's a good point. every big brand. Like yeah. how App, how Apple has maybe the iPad or the iPhone, whatever you want to say. Like mm-hmm. everyone has their hot product that like the world wants and the world wants to buy. Yeah, and that's what makes it the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's like an interesting point. Like, how do you how do you hone in, hone in on that? Yeah, and make that something you can attain. I think it's like, I think every now and then there's these once in a million products that just blow, and there's nothing that you can really do about it. Like, yeah, the Hatchimals of two years ago. Remember when those were like the hottest Christmas toy? No, you I didn't hear those. I didn't see nah? those. So basically, you these things called Hatchimals, right? Yeah, they were like eggs. You bought them completely put together. They're like yay big. Yeah, right. And over time, they would like start to hatch. And like this little mechanical little dragon or something inside of it, really would like eventually pop out. Yeah, and it was like, um, what are those like little animals that'll talk to you? So it's like a little, little pet that would like tell you to feed it or whatever. I don't know. Oh really? But it was like the hottest toy. Like 
they were reselling for like hundreds of dollars because <laughs> no one could get a hold of them. Yeah. Because they were selling out at like Toys R Us. Rest in peace. But they were selling out so <laughs> fast. You know? Like, and I just think there's nothing you can really do about that. Like, mm-hmm. the Beanie Babies. Like, Beanie Baby convinced everyone to Thanks. hold on to those things because they were going to be worth a lot of money. Yeah. You know? And I just think that's more luck. Like, I don't think there's anything you can really do about that. Yeah, no. Like, there's always going to be a product or multiple products a year that just take off and there's nothing you can do about it like Yeezys Yeezys when they first came out those things were reselling for thousands Uh, I heard a I heard a leak of one of Kanye's songs and he was talking about um, he was talking about uh, how they did it with no logo Mm. he had a line like yeah Yeezy did it with no logo bro (laughs) did he make a diss track towards Drake on that song yeah he did yeah what was the line do you remember Uh, I'm I'm paraphrasing but Uh, that was one of the lines I don't think Drake wants beef over there anymore I think he's done going at them you think so I think Pusha T ended it (laughs) you think so (laughs) what's he gonna do I mean yeah like what you know that Pusha T can body you so I probably wouldn't get involved over there if I I was you yeah I I like his line he's like uh, he's got hot because he told on me yeah, I mean, I think that's a, I think it's true, funny job. but you still got body. You really think you know what I mean? When I heard that Pusher track, because like it's funny because like I think it's a, that was a funny beef because Push is one of those rappers where like I think a lot of people like, yeah, appreciate, yeah. So that like versus like the Meek Mill, right? Like Meek Mill, some people like him, some people don't like him. So when he went after Especially Drake at the time, at the time, I think yeah. when he went after Drake, it was easy to be like, "Oh, Meek is trash," la la la. And plus, he back didn't respond. To back, right? And he didn't respond. I mean, Drake was getting hits. But my you thing is like I think when you listen to was back to back like the diss, yeah. But yeah. What, I think when you listen to that, I yeah. think that's a beatable track. Yeah. Like I think if, if Meek wanted to, I think he could have killed him. Especially because I, I don't think he Meek, could. Meek's my favorite rapper, so I think he could have killed him. I think he. I think because I mean you got to think Meek was battle rapping back in the yeah. day. I think so like low Meek, key Meek had bars for Drake. I think he did too. I just for some reason I mean he was on tour at the time. Yeah. But I mean is I don't that think that's an tour? excuse. You're a rapper. Like, is that your girl tour or your world tour? Like one liners. Yeah. Hitting them. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it was a beatable diss. Yeah. But, and then I heard um, the Duppy freestyle that Drake did. And I was like, okay, like, he's body and Pusha. I was yeah. like, this might get interesting. Yeah. Because if you would have asked me before, like, who would win between the two, I'd be yeah. like, all right, Pusha's going to kill him. Yeah. Because Drake can't rap like Pusha can. Yeah. But I heard Duppy and I was like, okay, the beat was crazy. The bars were crazy. crazy. I was like, all right, this is going to be a good beef. And Pusha did have unfair advantage, though. And then Pusha just. He, he had Kanye Pusha beats. Pusha killed him. He had, he had Kanye beats. Yeah. So, like. But I. The dude who made Duppy was the same guy that made, um, whatever, the story of Adidon, I think, if I remember right. Really? I think he got the same producer. Yeah. Crossing lines over here, not loyal, yo. So it's like he didn't even get a Kanye beat, which would have been unfair. Mm. And I think he probably recognized that. Well, the beat started from that first track, right? That he dropped off of. uh, Which was a Kanye beat, yeah. Was a Kanye beat. Man, push was hard, yo. And then Drake, whatever decided, Drake thought he wanted smoke. And then he got. I would have paid anything to see Drake respond. I yeah. wanted him to respond again so bad. His uh, his uh, that guy who like helps him navigate his career, Prince uh, J Prince. Yeah, J maybe? Prince or yeah. J Prince's dad, whoever. Something like that. Or I think J Prince the dad and J Prince Jr. But the dad, uh-huh. whoever, was like kind of saying, uh, "We don't need those kind of problems." And I think it's because uh, it get it'll get outside of rap. Yeah, especially when you bring family into we it. Bring family yeah. into it, and like you know, push yeah, someone would have. They would have boxed, or someone would have. Someone would got jumped. Yeah. Well, yeah. I saw like a video like Push was doing a show in Toronto and they made it seem that like uh, Drake sent goons, but then like Push's goons messed up. And oh, then Pusha, no. tweeted, Pusha tweeted like Drake, like your boy's in the hospital. He's in critical condition, bro. This is not you. Like it's you're not you're rap. not that guy. Damn. <laughs> you're not that, that guy. guy. I was like, oh, like, I didn't Sheesh. die too deep into it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Drake was like, uh. Yeah. But I, if, you, if you watch that video The interview with LeBron He did after that Like yeah. a few months after The whole beef He said that Before the diss He didn't have um, Man I don't remember the tracks But uh, He had like two Three or four songs On um, Scorpio Yeah or Was that the name of the album Scorpio Scorpion I think it was Scorpion Whatever mm-hmm. um, That weren't on there before so it's like he took all the energy that was going to go into the disc yeah. and put it into like three or four more songs, which is probably like the better idea. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's not like he would have got more famous off the disc. Exactly. He's the biggest artist in the world. He had more to lose, right? Definitely. Definitely. I think somehow he came out without losing nothing. Yeah. Well, because it's Drake. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then they directly give you hits back to back. So mm-hmm. did he lose the battle and win the war? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because at the end of the day, who was paid more for a show? You know. We say average two million. What's the show? worst thing that happened to Drake? Like the world knows about his son. Yeah. It's not. Nobody even cares. It's not he even a bad fans. deal. Like well, I was also surprised. I think people cared. are actually excited about it. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, Drake's got something. Well, I'll be so mad if I was Adidas that pushed and ruined the bag. Yeah. What? Drake had Kanye, a whole line coming. Ah oh, man, Kanye, you gotta be so weird, bro. Mm. Imagine Kanye, Yeezy, and then a Drake collab. Adidas would have been on top. Well, it'd be a death of Nike, bro. Hundred percent. It would be the it would be the the beginning of the end for Nike. Hundred percent. I think you have to understand the influence. Would have put Adidas above. You have to think. You have to think about influence for a second. You have two of the greatest artists in the world. That pull alone. Yeah. Right. So like people joined Nike because they saw what they did with Jordan. Mm. That's where you go to Nike from a business perspective. Yeah. Uh, Yeezy the brand has has in the past like four or five years that they've been part of Adidas like corporation. They grew the bottom line like a couple bill, mm. right? Just drawing people. So you have Drake with that kind of influence, Kanye with that kind of influence. Imagine Zion now signing with Adidas just because Drake and Kanye are there. Yeah. And who knows? That line could have been fire. Fire. Like the clothes could have been dope. Yeah, the two was, biggest artists in the world on the same yeah. team. Yeah, I think it would have helped Adidas push over Nike because I'm just assuming that Nike's ahead of them, and that's probably a safe guess. Yeah, I wonder how. I think. I'm, I'm, I'm sure like, it's close, honestly. Yeah. I think Nike is probably seven bill as a corp, and then like Adidas maybe three bill, like value wise. Value wise, so uh-huh. I think Adidas has a lot of growing to do. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, who I'd knows? actually be interested to see. Are you about to Google that? Yeah. Uh, I'm you? just. I'm assuming Nike's higher. It's just. Um, I mean, it's just been around longer and everything. But. Uh, what does it say? Yeah, I think. I mean. Especially what we're talking about, like longevity. Fifteen point nine billion, bro. Nike. Yeah. It's crazy. That's crazy. Revenue that, nine point six one billion a year. Net income one point one billion. Nine billion crazy. a year. Net profit margin eleven point four six percent. Isn't that crazy? So they're almost bringing in a bill profit every year. Yeah. Chilling. That's insane. Uh, That's why they got so much for. LeBron. I mean, yeah, they're like. A, That's why they gave LeBron a billion. And then Adidas is worth six point eight billion. Mm. So you see the difference. So they almost doubled them. Uh, almost doubled them. Uh, their net revenue is five point eight <laughs> billion. Net income only six hundred thirty two million. Mm. Uh, only. <laughs> only. Only compared to Nike. Yeah. But they're up though. I've, I I have Adidas stock by the way. It's a pro tip. Um, I think they're they're more than Puma's on the way up. Adi- yeah, Puma's on the way up. And uh, Adidas just as a brand, I think is gonna is just gonna beat out beat Nike <laughs> for the next ten years. Um. But their net profit margin is ten point seven four percent. Okay, so they're around the same, around close to. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm honestly not surprised that Nike's is that much bigger at the moment. Yeah, because you got to think Jordan's a big brand by itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, and to have that underneath you, mm-hmm. and then I mean, not even, especially because I think like with as bold as Nike is with their marketing campaigns, yeah, like the Colin Kaepernick thing, um, what they did like a few months ago, they did some ad, I forget. You remember Colin Kaepernick? Was it? Me? I don't think it was that him. video they did. Was it him like a few months ago? Was that video they did? Maybe. I thought, I, it was, I thought it was funny. I don't know. They just they're really bold in the way that they advertise. Mm-hmm. Like they're upset, accepting of all cultures and everything. Yeah, making making that distinct that, that decision. Yeah, they're just gonna be like, all right, we're just gonna accept people who they are. I mean, people start bringing this stuff. It works out too. Uh, that's when I realized how smart Nike is and how two different arms they have. Uh, when they did that video, and then I saw all the other videos on Facebook of all the, like all the people who didn't like that decision, and they yeah. started burning all that Nike stuff, I totally forgot there's a whole part of Nike that like I I don't pay attention to, like the grandpa shoes, yeah. right? The things the that white like, man gym the white, shoes, yeah, like the stuff you don't buy, and you forget that like that like yeah. wait a minute, the urban side of Nike is all marketing. Their yeah. bread and butter is selling this fifty dollars shoe, bro. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like it's probably way more expensive to make a Jordan. Way, probably not now because of that scale. But like our new At LeBron time, or like whatever was not whatever. Yeah. And like sell that show because they they obviously have like a, a a limit right. They probably won't sell a shoe more than four hundred dollars. Uh, like out, out the gate. Yeah. It's funny how they have that uh uh that other side of their business and how which still exists like the pay less thirty dollars shoes. I think that was a smart decision yeah. of leadership to support. The urban community and that side of it, because if they lost yeah. that, 
they'll completely lose all their value. And I think that's super smart. Yeah, and, I think uh, like what you just said. I think that's where the, all the value is. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, like who sets who sets the culture? It's urban. Exactly. Know? Like it's not the old people who live in the suburbs. Yeah, we're gonna die soon. You know, like because at the end of the day, those aren't the people that spread fashion. Like those exactly. those are the people who sit around and talk about family and all that stuff. Exactly. But it's like the urban community. You come around, you see your boy's outfit, you exactly. gas it up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good bet. It's probably a safe bet. In all honesty, they probably yeah. looked at both ends. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, bye. We don't need to sell anymore. All yeah. white gym shoes. We, we get to sell the Nike swoosh. off whites all day, and I believe deep down my core that they like save a couple thousand like off white and all their collabs, and they flip them again for more money. That's what I would do if I was in the business. If I was them, I mean, <laughs> I guess they don't even have to save old ones, but I was gonna say if I was them, print a thousand of them, yeah. and release them like ten years from now, and then that's where you resell them. They probably gonna re-release you know? them, yeah. Like sell them for three hundred at first release, yeah. And the second release is like five hundred, yeah. You know, some like the off, they'd be going for thousands of dollars. I wonder if they like have like fifty of them and then flip them. Yeah, we were talking about that last time. Yeah. Like, are they involved in that flip game? Yeah. Interesting. Which I've, I've, I'm honestly surprised they haven't got involved. Like, why is there no like a resale sec, like section on the Nike website? You know, where think, you can go on and take pictures of your old shoes and flip them. I think the monopoly, the fear, <laughs> be crazy. The fear of uh, how do we navigate that? Yeah. Like, how, like I was saying, how does Nike buy um, StockX and then not be biased and only have their shoes on it? Yeah, because they'll dic- they'll dictate yeah. the market. Yeah, for everything. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So I think it will have to stay separate. I'm cu- I'm curious to see who StockX is leading to for them to be purchased because they're like what, a billion dollar company but haven't made profit yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's it's interesting to see where they uh where they lead to. Yeah. Hmm. Got me thinking, yo. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they could go with it. Like, if if you sell a pair of shoes on our store, 10% of your revenue, you get a gift card to buy new shoes. Mm-hmm. You know? there's. I mean, there's a lot of things they could do with it. Maybe the Amazon Prime it, that type of model, um, <coughs> where you don't... Maybe they, they create crazy high prices, or they follow the market, they let it leave, but then, like, they say, oh, hey, you have Amazon Prime, or Nike Prime, or Nike Pro, whatever Nike they call Pro, it. Nike Pro, yeah. Uh, now you're... Nike, hire us, yo. Yeah, for consulting, for boy. We need to be on a creative right? marketing team, Come man. Come on, What's now? Up? The new Nike Pro subscription program, you don't, you, don't, you don't got to buy... Or you don't have to pay the retail price, or the resale mm. price. So then now... Yeah, you get a, like, discounted price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is all discounted price, right? So, like, yeah, right. they get a monthly membership from you, that bank, <laughs> kill it. Man, throw the bag, us, Nike. Come on, What's up, man? Puma, please. Puma, please. Some Puma, please. So let's talk about the vlog, man. Yo, so the vlog episode was one was dope. We dropped episode one. Uh, it affects everything. Uh, I think uh, we talked about my story a lot, but just I feel like it, it. Hopefully, it helps other people reflect in their own lives about you know they could have the courage of like, hey, you you have a uniqueness to you, you have an IP to you, you have a likeness to you that people might buy into. Mm-hmm. And you're an entrepreneur, might not share that. So we shot yeah. episode two today. Uh, yes, we did. And we just kind of talked about um, the idea of building Rome and what it could be. And I think uh, that conversation was, was what I get super passionate about, about, hey, chase what it could be. Chase the possibilities, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> you're not limited to anything, you know, especially when we're so young. And uh, even if you're old and you're young in your journey, I don't know. Just chase what it could be. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was good too because you got to see a little bit of your background that people not might might not know about. You yeah, know? saw the place where you grew up. Yeah, exactly. All the pictures of young Vince. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's a lot of stuff to, and plus people eat that stuff up. It shows my mom for being a star in that uh, yeah. episode. She did a thing, mommy Mac. She's a good host. She's a good host. She held that down. Yep. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was it's good. I think it was good for you. I think you should do more of that for you sure. Think I, I mean, co- you're going to. You think but. I should continue doing the vlog? Definitely. I just think. Um, especially there's a lot of people out there looking for mm-hmm. not only little gems at yeah. all times, but they also want to get to know people on a deeper level. Exactly. Cause we live in an era of surface level Yeah. and no one, everyone's afraid to show their problems, show their day to day. Cause they all want to look good. Mm-hmm. And I was, so, and I was going through a, uh, old Gary V content cause I just want to learn about this like personal branding thing from him. Cause he's expert. He's expert. He's killing it. He talked about, which is funny. Um, he talked about the journey and how he wish he captured it, mm. and I was like, "Wow, that's what we're gonna do." 
Yeah, because I'm not talking. I'm not talking from a perspective like I made it, mm-hmm. or like I'm like some guy who has like all the answers, right? Yeah. It's just like okay, cool. Like they say, I have gems. I have gems. This is, I'll get in my psyche, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not doing it for like, yeah, I'm super smart. Here's a gem for you. Like if they find it, they find it cool. If they if they love it, they love it cool. But it's like, yo, like, uh, like I opened a restaurant when I was 20 years old. You yeah. know, like it's surreal to say out loud. Recently. To be honest with you, it still hasn't hit me yet. Like, it's not something that I like, wake up every morning and be like, yeah, I'm the greatest. Yeah. But it's like, cause there's so much more for me, right? I'm chasing mm-hmm. what it could be. So I think it's like seeing somebody who's young that you can relate to yeah. who's doing it is the cool thing. Yeah. Right? And it's like, I love, I love that, like, we caught on early and I love that we're like telling that start of it too. Cause it's like, yo, listen, like, man, I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just learning and like, we're, we're going to. We don't know what's gonna happen five years from now, right? Right. It's right. just cool to, just to see what it could be, mm-hmm. what it could turn into, you. right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially like, like being honest. Like, it, let's say the vlog doesn't ever like really take off. Yeah. For you, it'll be something to look back on. Yeah. Five, ten years from now, be like, yo, like, look at me. Wow, I'm being dumb here. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely about to make a mistake right now. Yeah. You know? And then you can look at it that way. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think for me personally, I just liked watching it. And yeah. Get, you know. Just just it, like you said, you know, there's be gems and everything, and yeah. get to know people on a deeper level. You know, I was thinking about it though. Six years ago, I graduated high school. I was 18, 17, 18 years old. Six years ago? I think it was six years ago. Already? Maybe five. When was 14? That was four years ago? Ooh, five yeah. years ago? Five years ago. It's almost, wow. almost six. So, you know, I like. Time flies. Man, I'm, I almost, I barely graduated high school. <laughs> so, like, for me, barely graduating high school. Yeah. For me, then to do other projects, make that successful. Then leading into a restaurant, mm-hmm. making that successful, into this moment right now, yeah, like that's the journey. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to show people, like what it could be like. That's what inspires me to wake up every single morning because it's like, man, like imagine if I listen to people, dude. God, yeah. like I think I said this before, but like one of my good friends wrote on my graduation thing, I can't believe you did it. Who who would have thought you would be here? Graduating? Yeah, in my at my open house. So yeah. things like things like that, like I keep. I remember and yeah. the building blocks for me, right? It's like yeah. I rem- okay. Who would have thought that? I'll remember that. You know, yeah. I yeah. me even opening up a restaurant in my where I went to high school at, like another kind of like I used to skip school cause I hated it so much. Boom mm-hmm. open one right across from it. Mm-hmm. Um so it's kinda like mm-hmm. surreal, like deep. yeah, right? Yeah. No, it means just being real. So it's, yeah. uh I was just a uh, a Jay Z reference or uh, song, he's like, I dropped the first album you guys laid out on me, right? Mm. <laughs> and I feel like that's my kind of story with my uh like people think that like a lot of my friends come to the restaurant, but the, like you said when when you were in the vlog, like you will see who's actually with you when you start small. Yeah, right. I didn't go to do some downtown, do some big multi million dollar thing. Cause that's not where I was at, right? So like had a little bit of money. <coughs> I did my little thing. Started super small. Yeah. Uh, you know they say you drop the second album and they went crazy. So like now when I do my second project, my second restaurant, my whatever, like it's it's with the intent to go crazy because it's like you guys saw me execute the first time yeah so it's like uh, then you'll realize who's not really with you I remember yeah. I remember good news this was uh, freshman year I was part of Global Tech and I'm wow, wow. shout yes. out to Global shout Tech to Global man. Tech we had the computers I completely yo. forgot that was a thing yeah bro if, if I didn't do Global Tech I don't think I'd graduate high school because I feel like we should probably explain what that was Global Tech was this uh, testing program using computers and technology through yeah. through high school without doing the traditional uh, the traditional wave I like to say so what they did is that your first two years they it was like um, fast on the program so like you had more credits so I think that's also why I got you know, the pass because my uh, first two years I took a lot of classes you had that buffer had that buffer yeah. but I remember it was in the English class <laughs> forgetting her name but I remember like uh, one day for good news or something I was like I was like yo I had I a dream yeah I was like yo I'm gonna be a billionaire I think I said or like I'm gonna be successful and like everyone busted out <laughs> laughing and then and I was like huh <laughs> got quiet after that put that in the mental put notes down. yeah put that down so like yeah. it's uh and money's <laughs> never the goal it was just like I just had a dream I just believed it and mm-hmm. like every single day more and more I'm realizing that like I'm getting more and more confidence in yeah. like who I am and where we're gonna go from here so I was just like man just looking back mm-hmm. and what sparked that was uh you know Facebook does the memories yeah yeah two years ago right or almost two years ago 
I opened a restaurant, right? And I literally made a post of like, I was like, I'm opening a restaurant in July. I'm 20, lol. <laughs> that was like, that's all you said. My June 22, yeah, in 2017. It's just funny, like where I was at 20 years old. Like, yeah, this is like, lol. Like, it's a joke. Yeah, man, did I have some balls? And do I have some balls? That's crazy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> enough about me though. <laughs> I mean, it's good though to talk about because I don't think your story gets appreciated enough. You know, yeah, like especially now. I mean, when you first opened the restaurant, everyone was obviously super proud of you. Yeah, but I think I mean it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Like, I'm sure everyone came around in the beginning, and like you said, once that second restaurant opens, you'll see who comes around. Mm -hmm. Yo, if you ever need anything, hit me up. Exactly. But it's like all you got to do for those people is be like, so how many times did you come to the old spot? Exactly. Oh, just once. Yeah, cool. And then uh, when your kids eat my cereal, you're gonna be like, oh. Oh, I remember him. Yeah, I remember. I went to school with him. Yeah, that's what like you know that chip <coughs> on your shoulder, uh, which I think is a good thing. Definitely, um, definitely. That was the best thing, right? But yeah. uh, depends on the severity of it. I feel like anyone who wants that, anything in our life has a chip on their shoulder. <laughs> I think everyone has a chip on their shoulder, and I feel like you don't. Yeah. If you don't admit it, then you're lying to yourself. Personally, yeah. I think people. Yeah, I think with everyone me. can call back to a person or a phrase or a thing that or like situation. affected them, yeah. and you just never forget, and it's it just fuels you. you. Yeah. yeah. For me, mine's a person. Really? Yeah, there was this one guy in high school I just never got along with. Yeah. And, like, part of my motivation is just because, like, I remember how much they used to bully me. Really? Yeah. And so, for me, it's like... You used to bully you in high school, bro? Yeah, yeah. Especially, like, at the start, like, freshman, sophomore year. Yeah, you told me this. Because I hadn't come into myself yet. Oh. Like, I hadn't really... Blossomed you gonna, Air quotes Are you gonna drop some names right now? No, 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 no I think you should put them on record nah, I won't drop names No, nah, because yeah. I want to have a conversation With that person down the road Okay And be like, yo, just so you know You fueled me, you know And there's like There's people that fueled me on both sides okay. Like I definitely have names in my head Of yeah. people that Positively fueled me Yeah And like gave me confidence Like there's one person in particular I'm very grateful to I actually haven't had a chance to tell them yet I need to But um, Like I hadn't come into myself yet I wasn't yeah. a confident young guy yet and they kind of boosted me up and yeah. made me feel like I should be myself and let yeah. that out, you know? And so ever since then, I like came into myself and I started to get more confident. Yeah. And now it's like, I can't wait to look back, not only at the person I was, but yeah. at how I was treated Ooh. and just talk to that person and be like, yo man, like, and I don't want to brag it off into mm-hmm. their face at all. Cause I'm not yeah. that type of person, but I just want to sit them down and be like, yo, this is what you said to me yeah. and how it fueled me for X amount of years. Yeah. And it's really been my motivation. I just can't wait to have that conversation. Because yeah. I hope it fuels them, too. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take the mature route. You said not name names. But yeah. um, I, never, I would never say I was bullied. But I, I was definitely uh, uh, under overlooked, underappreciated my whole life. Uh, even to this moment, right? So it's kind of like, that's what that's definitely my chip on my shoulder. Yeah. And like me proving that like I'm worth, I'm worth, I'm worth it. Mm-hmm. And like I'm here for a reason. Proving to yourself. Or to uh, those people, to myself, to the people who doubt, like to my family, like yeah. it's like, you know, like I'm 22 years old, I take care of everything. So like, like I'm yeah. doing this like live action in real life. So it's kind of like <laughs> first cut. I always tell people like we don't live the same life, bro. Like mm. I have to be successful for my family. Like we're yeah. first generation. I'm laying down the bricks. Right. Like the money that I make, the the, the wealth that I acquire, which is which is not just money but life, happiness, mm-hmm. is like for third fourth generations to enjoy like this is not for yeah. me i might get a car out of it i might get a house out of it mm-hmm. <laughs> for me to enjoy but like it's much bigger than me yeah i wish i could just grind for myself it do i do it for myself and, yeah, I mean, and I have think, enjoyable yes but like i do it it's 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 the it, this my life is has been is now uh has been and is now devoted to the future, uh, the future. yeah i think there's definitely something important about realizing that mm-hmm. you know because it's different for us because like we both don't come from situations where there's a trust fund set up yeah, no. and we can just chill and do whatever. Yeah. You know, like the decisions I make today most likely will affect my family's future, like my kids' mm-hmm. future, not necessarily my parents or anything like yeah. that, but the decisions I make today will probably affect my kids. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how do I navigate that? You know? Yeah. Cause I, I mean, one thing I've been struggling with in the past few years is like, there's so much pressure, not only that I put on myself, but just in general to, have you know x idea and make it succeed yeah that sometimes i'm scared to like take a day off or Mm. take a night off or something like that and i think a lot of what that can do is kind of suck the joy out of things 
So one thing I've been trying to balance, because you definitely, you, like, I've, you hear it from whoever you listen to. Like, some mm-hmm. people, Gary Vee's an example. He's like, don't take a night off. Work, you know, work whenever, two in the morning, whatever, yeah. and hustle. And I think there is definitely truth to that. But then you also want to look at it from, like, the mental happiness state of things. Like, yeah. you don't want to forget that there is some pleasure in life mm-hmm. and happiness. And there is definitely a mm-hmm. situation where you can get happiness out of the work. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's like, what I get out of this. Yeah. Which is why this is so much of a focus for me. Yeah. But, you know. I, I think, uh, going back to that, I don't know if Gary, uh, like, doesn't want you to take breaks. Or doesn't want you to, like, enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe like, I'm not listening deep enough, but just like from surface level, yeah, I know that he says like hustle, 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 and work. Yeah, you know? but I think what he also does say is like do something that you love. Like he does say that. No, I like think he's find having, your passion and hone like, in on that. He's having fun what he's doing. Yeah. So like, I feel well, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, so like for he, me, yeah. this is fun. So yeah, exactly. I enjoy working and take like exactly. dedicating a week to focusing on this. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I think you're living what he's. Yeah. What he I think and hopefully yeah. what he, I don't never met him. Yeah. But what I take soon come. What I mean, too, when I tell soon come, right? Soon what come. I tell people, too, is like, man, you got to, but, oh, man, do I struggle with being anxious and wanting things now and not thinking? Like, I yeah. struggle that um, you should take the Enneagram. You should take the an Enneagram. personality yeah, test? Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like a personality test. It's called Enneagram. Okay. I'm a type three. So, we're the performer <laughs> slash achiever. Okay. You should take that and figure yourself out more. It will answer a lot of questions for you. But okay. uh, for me, for example, like, I have a problem with, like, not taking breaks and being a workaholic. That's part of being a type three. Um, Cause we're not satisfied. We don't do, you know, so it's, mm-hmm. it's uh hard for me to take breaks and be like, okay, like I feel like I'm not there enough. Or I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm overanalyzing everything. Cause like deep down, <laughs> you know, we compare a lot with ourselves and with other people. So mm-hmm. uh, it is, it is part of the process, right? Like it is part of like figuring out how to enjoy it on the way and chasing what it could be on. And I say these things to remind myself um, and people help me get back on that, yeah. on that, on that path about, Hey, like, it's not about Irie being this big thing today. You know, it's about enjoying, getting this Enjoying play. today. Yeah, enjoying yeah. today and, like, executing yeah. on today. And then, like, going to sleep and have rest and have fun in the process. Like, yeah. Uh, and then when you start... So it's like, uh, how do you balance progress and happiness? Exactly. Because there definitely is balance there. Because, like, you won't get to your point... You won't execute until you're having fun, I believe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true because if there's no progress, at least, I mean, I'm sure you're the same way, yeah. but for me... If I'm not making any progress, yeah. then I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. So for me, like the balance is kind of natural. Yeah. Like I feel the need to better myself as yeah. often as I can because it brings me joy. Mm. So. But you have to be happy. But there is during. also things that I enjoy doing. Yeah. That don't progress me at all. You yeah. Know? But you have to be happy. Yeah. While doing the while progressing. Yeah. Like but that's that, what I'm talking about. Like, like the balance. progressing won't make you happy. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it depends. No, no, I think you, it depends on what you're progressing on. You have to, you have to be happy before. I think hmm. you get what I'm saying. Like, but I think joy does come from progression. Uh, hitting your goals, you can be, uh, you yeah. can be excited or be happy that you hit a goal. I mean, we, like, can, we can use the gym for example, right? Okay, like, yeah. If the goal is to bench 200, yeah. If you started at 100 pounds, yeah. hitting 150 is going to bring you joy because you're yeah. progressing. That's yeah. what I mean. Is that like? But, through but, uh, through the journey, yeah. you're gonna get some joy out of it. But I feel like, yeah, okay, I agree you know, with that. That's where I'm saying the balance comes from. But sh- you should, I feel like you should try to at least. It's gonna be hard f- fucking work to get to that point. Yeah, but you should be like happy to like go to the gym every single day and happy ch- to have the uh, the chance to hit two hundred bench two hundred, right? Because mm. I feel like once you hit it, then what keeps you motivated from going? <laughs> mm. That's true. Well, that's that's my that's why like I've been like waiting to get to the gym because I'm trying to find what's gonna be my like. It can't be like I need to lose weight, Vince. Like for me, I need bigger buy-in than that. So like I'm trying to figure out like what's gonna make me like enjoy like, like a mile goal or a weight goal or something like that. More like a consistent like okay like thing that keeps me going to enjoy the process. Like right, I hate working out. That's why I haven't, I haven't done it. Same. So Same. I gotta like I have to find happiness within working out to can to be healthy. Like because mm. it, it's like business, right? It doesn't stop. Like when you work out at the gym, like. It, be, it should become part of your life. Like you don't take a day off. Like it's part of your life right, now, right? right? So like that that level of commitment. Like I'm trying to wrap around my head, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like, man, like, well, then I like I can't just be just straight goal achieving. Because what happens after I hit the goals, right? Like, yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying. I hear that. Yeah. So I feel like what I'm trying to do is like be happy before and like love where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. But it like, doesn't mean you don't want to be better. And then you you attack that like being better and enjoying the process. Oh, okay. Like, you know, now, now I'm selling myself being healthy, 
so that I can go work harder. Mm. I can work longer. Okay. Then I'm like, yeah. okay, then I'm getting a little vain. Like, oh, I can look better in clothes. I can look better in pictures. Like, so I'm selling myself. Like, I like to do that. I like to sell myself on a vision. Okay. So I can buy him. Okay. Because at first, I tr- when I try to work out, it's just like, I'm fat. I need to be, I need to be skinny. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the same. But in order to care about that, you have to actually be like, that has to motivate you. Yeah. Which it doesn't sound like it does. For me? Yeah. It sounds like your motivation comes from like, um, I have bigger buy in mm, than that. Yeah. I think you're, you're so big picture in the way yeah. that you think, I think. Yeah. That like something like losing weight doesn't really excite you, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's just my opinion. I think so too. And yeah. I think that's it how. It doesn't I, excite me either. Yeah. And I think that's my how. My excitement like, is like what you said. Like, yeah. The clothes are going to fit better. I can wear whatever. You know what I mean? I think that's, yeah. That's like where my, and also part of my motivation, especially since we're talking about health is yeah. like, eventually I'm going to have kids who are going to learn from me. Mm-hmm. So if I'm eating garbage and putting on weight, like they're mm-hmm. only going to follow that. You know? Exactly. So it's like, I want to develop a habit that my kid can pick up, mm-hmm. you know? Mm, I like that. You know? Like I want Arnold Schwarzenegger to be my kid. You know? You get what I'm saying? I want my like, kid to be yoked. That's why I feel like a lot of people should yeah. buy into. Yeah. And like, we're two guys who are just trying to figure it out. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I think I'm going to try to go to the gym tomorrow in the morning, to be honest. Huh? Yeah, I'm probably going to for this. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. try to pull up. So I'm gonna try to get some Z's early tonight. Get what some time? resting. What time are you going to the gym? Probably before I work, so maybe like six a.m. Six thirty. Do a little cardio, a little lifting. So I tore my ACL, my MCL. I can walk in my knee. It does hurt me. Um, so I think I'm gonna, mm. I think I'm gonna start off with a little, like maybe a, a, a walk or a light jog. Okay. And knock out some hammer and curls and probably do a full body workout. Okay. And then I start small. I really don't know what I'm doing in the gym, so uh, <laughs> I think that's probably the reason why I don't work out because like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's uh, yeah. There's things to be. I think learned. for me, like one thing that I've tried to do is, I mean, it, literally what we were just talking about is yeah. like I only do stuff in the gym that makes like I enjoy. Yeah. Right? So for me, like I hate doing squats. Yeah. It's not that I hate leg day; I just hate yeah. squats. Yeah. So I find a replacement for that that mm. I don't not or I don't hate. You know yeah. what I mean? Ooh. Or like for me, I hate cardio, yeah. but I like playing basketball. Yeah. So I get my cardio through basketball, mm. you know, and then all of a sudden the gym's fun for me. Yeah. Because I enjoy it. So. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we were just literally talking about that. You can relate that to anything. Yeah. You know. Find a way to like, uh, I was, I was, uh, there's this guy named Rumi, I think, and he was talking about the money dial and how uh, you should invest in things, not only monetarily, uh, but like. Physically, like mentally and things that you enjoy and it's like not do things you don't enjoy mm. uh, just that like that you know yeah, yeah. so uh, and like one of his things was like convenience so he put he invests all his money and all his time and his energy on having a convenient life so it might be travel so mm-hmm. it might be working out health and wellness and like what would it take to get there you know what I'm saying and just diving all in that and like completely mm-hmm. either limiting investment or completely cutting off investment the things you don't want to be doing every single day. Yeah. Um, so obviously, if you want to be a business person and you want to enjoy your life, health is part of that. So you have to invest the money and the time to get there. So maybe that's like you, you invest in your local gym, mm-hmm. you invest in a trainer, and you go hard. You, when you take, when you make that stance, you take your little three, four, five little things, and like that becomes your uh, what you do day to day. Yeah. I think it was, I like his little perspective on that. Yeah, that's I think cool. that's true too. Yeah, like it's all about what you focus on. What you focus on. It's something we talk about a lot, mm-hmm. for sure. For sure, for sure. Is there anything we missed? I don't know. I think it's a lot of gems in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> we've been going for a while. Have we? I Ooh, don't know. It was nine eighteen. When did we start shooting? I don't know. I didn't even uh, check. Shout out to Porsche nine eighteen. Uh, dream car. Right now. Is that I, really? Yeah. Are what? you a car guy? Oh, I'm. A, am I a car guy? Yes. Yeah. So I feel bad at this because I want to help save the earth, and I feel like. I'm gonna get so much flack for this later in life. I'm gonna have cars or gas guzzlers. So hopefully I can get out of my boyish dream. Yeah. Or I'd be like, hey, listen. You want like multiple cars? Yeah. Mm. I love cars. I love design. I love the way it makes me feel like mm. I, I since I've been a kid, I've been in love with cars. Like I want like definitely my first goal in life was to be a car racer and my parents said no. <laughs> it's probably for the better. Yeah. Even to like you've driven me, right? Hmm? Have you? Have you been in a car with me? Been in the car like yeah. with you driving? Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, you, I like Definitely. to go fast. Yeah, I, I, I think I, so. Yep, hundred percent. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> you treat it like it's a race. Yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, I just love going fast. I love cars. So, yeah. that's usually my thing. Hundred percent. Okay, I'll have an absurd collection of cars one day. Yeah, 
I'm not there. Yeah. Which is well, weird, That's why you had your own thing, though. Yeah, my dad, like... See, my dad worked in the car industry yeah. growing up, so I figured... I think if anyone looked at my life, they would have bet that I'd be into cars. Yeah. I just never got into it. Yeah. Ever. You're a different thing. I think me is like... I just like to travel. Yeah. I think. So I'm not even... I'm not even really too sure yeah. of like what my thing is. Mm-hmm. Like what's my spending on? I don't even know. Yeah, I like traveling, but like I'm a little bougie. I'm a food guy for sure. Yeah. So food. Most of thing. my money goes to food. See? For sure. So you might spend like a lot of money, expensive dinner, and expensive. Yeah. Travel and food, I guess, go hand in hand. Yeah. Crazy experiences. I like to travel, try new food. Yeah. You my know? top three would be cars, food, and then third would be um, uh, experiences. So travel, but like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess this. experience yeah. is a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. But I travel. Do you like though, concerts? Like, Yes and no. Hmm. Uh, I haven't been to very many. Me either. To be honest. I have really bad luck with concerts. Really? So, yeah. Every time I try to go, something else happens, so I can't go to them. Uh, the ones I have been to, like, I, I think I'm like a half and half between extrovert and introvert. So when I'm in a concert, like, can world. I get that liquid confidence in you. Uh, yeah. Like, I just don't I'm like being touched extrovert. like that. And like, I'm like uh, being around, like, okay. like, feeling I'm in a sardine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I don't know, like, why I don't like it, but like. Uh, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. To be around all those people. Yeah. So I feel like if I go to a concert, I want like a skybox or like okay. <laughs> something weird. Something bougie. I feel something like. bougie. Yeah. But also Speaking like... Of I, concerts. Yeah. But that's who it is too. A few weeks ago. Oh. My man Dave, UK artist. Yeah. Announced his, tour? his America tour. And where is he coming to? Chicago. Are we going? 100%. I got two tickets. You got two tickets already? I got two tickets. How much are your tickets? 12 bucks a piece. What? Dirt cheap. Oh, Dirt cheap. That's why I seen them and I bought them because I figured they'd sell out instantly. Yeah, I'm sure they're out. already sold out at this point. Twelve bucks, yo. It was like twelve, really, in Chicago? But damn, so I got an extra ticket if you want to make a Bro, fun weekend in Chicago. Uh, we're going. That should be lit. Uh, tell me the date. <laughs> it's like uh, September something on a Friday, I think. I'm I'll there. let you know as I get closer. I'm there, but. I was like, look, so, I don't know how many times it's gonna come to America, Bro, so I gotta go. A day concert, you have to be in Chicago. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if it'll be interesting to see if Chicago's on the vibe. You know? It'd be really interesting. To Not see. every city knows about the UK team. Yeah, you know. Maybe, but if they want Chicago, the, I mean, they picked all that. Well, out. we got to do. We got to go to a London music festival. We have to. Make and just happen. see them all at once, like every UK artist that we like, just all. At, you know yeah, how crazy of an experience freak, that would be. I'll freak out, dude. We'd be oh, like out of our element in a different country. <laughs> Dave, bro, I love you, bro. Like, you already know. I'd be fanboying everybody. Yeah, bro. Yo, Huncho, let me get a picture, bro. Yeah. Get a picture. Well, picture. Now, to be honest, like, <laughs> I think if I actually got the opportunity to talk to one of those guys or like see him, I think I would just have a conversation and be like, "Me too." I'd be like, I think the first thing I would say is like, "Isn't it crazy how you are like twelve hours away from me, half a day away from me, yeah. and yet I'm able to absorb your music and like it?" Yeah, we're in completely different cultures. Isn't that crazy? I would just like say that to him and see how they'd respond. Mm. You know, because it's like, dang, there's American dudes in Michigan listening to my music. Yeah. I think they would, that would like make them go crazy, you know? Because just like how we're making this podcast, how they started, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're just making some music. Yeah. And then bam. And then all of a sudden you got Drake people coming up to you from halfway across the yeah. world talking about Drake you know, helps on a want to know fucking remix next thing you know. Change my life. <laughs> change my life. <laughs> that Drake feature. Ah. Drake Shout changed the game. Hmm. We talk about that too much. Give him, give him, his, <laughs> give him his props. Well Love deserved too. Well deserved, man. Yeah. Man. Well, right. should we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. It's episode four. Four. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Um, I think I haven't talked to you about this, but I think guests are on the way. Yes, on the way. I think we've established who we are. I think probably a few more episodes of just us. And then I think next step is going to be bringing in some guests. I've got a list of people that I think would be interesting for us to talk to. Um, and I think it'd be interesting for you guys to hear. Mm-hmm. So when that comes, it'll come. Mm. Yeah, episode four. Four. Catch y'all later. Peace out. Peace.